my name is Aileen Perez and I'm an astrophysicist and this is how do scientists determine how hot is the core of the sun. So um, this is going to be a long math problem. It's called a uh, hydrostatic equilibrium. So hydrostatic equilibrium is a perfect balance between pressure and gravity. So pressure going in, gravity going out. So it's, it's a balance between these two forces and because of this balance, we can actually determine the, some of the main factors of the core of the sun. And I'm going to sort of go over like a brief overview how to get uh, this answer. A lot of, uh, I might skip a couple of like pies or something like that. These numbers are very large or very small. So when it comes to some certain constants, they become negligible. And what you really look for in this type of problems is the order of magnitude. Meaning, is it a million, is it a hundred, rather than it's like 200 or 210. So uh, let's talk about what we're gonna do here. So the weight uh, for gravity, the force of gravity, goes as the gravitational constant, m1, m2, divided by this distance, so the distance between the two shells. So if we take the sun and we split it into sort of two shells, the weight of the actual sun as a whole is going to be g if we split it into two shells that are the same so m1 is approximately the same mass as m2 we end up with m square divided by r square and r is going to be the radius of the sun and the mass is mass one is equal to mass two so we're sp splitting the sun into two equal mass shells pretty much now let's talk about the pressure, right? I say hydrostatic equilibrium is a balance between the pressure and the gravitational forces. So pressure is equal to the force divided per unit area. So pressure, generally speaking, is force divided by the area. Um, this is a force, right? So we'll be able to make them equal to each other. So if we take the central pressure of the sun and multiply by the radius of the sun, square, which is in the units of area. We're forgetting uh, the pi factor here. And we make it equal to approximately to this gravitational force. Now we end up with some sort of balance, right? We have the right units, right? If we multiply this pressure by an area, we have a force and that's going to be the force from pressure, and if we make it equal to the force of gravity, they should be equal if they're in hydrostatic equilibrium. As I said, the reason that the star is not collapsing is because these two are equal. So if we solve for the pressure, we have our central pressure here. It's about g m square divided by the radius to the fourth. Okay, so now let's keep going. We know that the, the sun is a gas, is made out of gas, so we can kind of look at it as, a, as an ideal gas. And this is, this is a uh, crude estimation. Um, we're estimating this, we're assuming this, but it actually gives us about the right answer. Uh, you can do this with simulations and better software. Um, but the pressure should be the same as the number density, the Stefan Boltzmann constant, and your temperature. NKT, this is the ideal gas law. Okay, so if we have this equal to that, let's put it together. So we have G M square R to the fourth equal to N K T C. So now we already have the temperature of the core is involved. So now it's just a matter of figuring out what these things are. Now N, this density, is the mass of the sun divided by the typical mass of a single atom. So it's the mass of a single atom divided by the volume of the sun, R cubed. Okay, so then if we have G M squared r to the fourth, and here we plug in the mass of the sun uh, divided by the mass of a single atom divided by r cubed times k tc. 
Okay, so R cubed cancels most of this, leaving a single R on the other side. And then this mass of the sun cancels a mass square and leaves one single M. So the temperature of the core, and this is getting a little messy, um, we multiply the mass of an individual atom divided by the Stefan Boltzmann constant times G times M divided by R. And this can give you a pretty crude estimation, but it's actually going to get very close to the temperature of the core. And this is kind of how we calculate the temperature of the core. Um, if you plug in the numbers for the constants, and, and I want to do this, I'm kind of out of space, uh, you can plug in the mass of the protons for the mass of a regular, um, of a standard atom. It's mostly made out of uh, hydrogen, so it has a single proton. It's, uh, it's also, um, the, the proton is a lot heavier than the electron, so you can estimate uh, the mass, the typical mass of an atom as the mass of the proton. So if you plug in all these numbers, you'll get that the actual temperature of the core is about 23 million kelvins. So 23 times 10 to the 6 kelvins. And this is how we figure out the temperature of the core. My name is Eileen Perez, I'm an astrophysicist, and this is how hot is the core of the sun. Mm -hmm.